been some time since I stood before her in a place like this. Stature, Mistra. Your patron may not enjoy you shopping around the divine warlock. It bothers me none. Yeah. Be welcome, child of faith. You have come far, I perceive. How may I serve you this day? I am Vicar Humble Toes, guardian of the Stormshore Tabernacle. I keep the peace in this sacred place and guide those in need. She stands just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure undiluted weave I only have to reach out and it will carry me to Mistra wherever she may Easy be to save well <laughs> go on then it's rude to keep a goddess waiting time was I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again <laughs> the left one too maybe a knee <laughs> I don't think she's that kind of goddess you don't overhear something with a finger in a. She asks you to blow yourself up. I'm ready to for I? this. You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex lover. <laughs> My omnipotent, <laughs> omniscient. Yeah, where, where do you put it that way? I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. Of all things to be nervous about, Guardians with the Goddess seems reasonable. You're kind to say so, but this is hardly my first time in Mistra's presence. It's more the matter of what I'm going to say to her. During my Hi time would be away nice. in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Yes. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm going to have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. You are not taking me with you. The summoning channel Mistra has provided is one only I can enter. No matter how much I prefer not to face her alone. Seek her forgiveness. Mistress forgiveness? If you want me to claim the crown of Carsa, she'll hardly be in a forgiving mood after that. I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three dragon ante. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Okay, there he goes. Okay, this can't be good. <laughs> For the record, I think this is a te terrible idea, but yeah, it might pay pay up in the end. Ah, we are going to see it. Gale of Waterdeep, you look well. <laughs> not really. As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The crown of Carsis. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember? You were my lover. My chosen. Yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity. Nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. 
The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic wrought in the brief moment Carsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving your soul. Yep, oops. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Carsus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. Okay, that explains. But one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsus to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. Hmm. soil once more. I can't believe I saw her. After all this time. And what you felt was but the slightest drop drawn from the rushing torrent that is the weave. I confess, without my former prowess, even I struggle to stand her presence. The effects on the mortal body of such unfettered magical exposure cannot be overestimated. She held back in order to protect us, to make sure I heard her. The Carsite Weave, within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Carsus's malignant creation. Gods, how did I not see that? It's all too easy to miss things when you are blinded by desire. Mm. True enough. There's a reason such unwitting heroes have been the backbone of lyric and legend for as long as both have existed. Even so, I was hardly some naive apprentice at the time. I considered myself an archmage, and yet was fool enough to be mistaken for a common conjurer. At least now I'm armed with the truth, and Mistress' expectations. It sounds like the door to redemption is open at last. All I have to do is... Walk through it, carrying the crown of Carsus. Uh, is that Perhaps. what you want? I see few other options open to me. If I ever want to reclaim those parts of myself, the orb snatched away. If I ever want to be me again. You are a great man, Gale, with or without the orb. <laughs> I'll have to disagree with you there. Having not one, but two parasitic entities within your body does very little for one's faith in one's personality. Still, I should take the compliment with the same generosity it was given, so... Thank you. If I could promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil. 
I will not let you down. Now, I believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to. Shall we? Ah, you have a moment for me? I was hoping to speak to you. I confess, my thoughts have been somewhat scattered since my audience with Mistra. Uh-huh. The Karsai Weave could offer more than just power. It could bestow divinity. I only trust myself to wield it. <laughs> Don't trust Anyways, yourself. This may not be the course you would choose for me, but before you protest, you should at least know what it is you would be advising against. Please, close your eyes a moment. Okay. Astra Navigamus. Okay. Few mortals ever glimpse what you're about to see. But don't be alarmed. I'm here with you. Now. Open your eyes. The outer plains. This is where gods dwell. They observe us from afar. Where they make playthings of us. <laughs> Be there. They will keep all of this from us. The power. The possibilities. They only want us to serve them. To pray to them. And ultimately to die for them. But what if we didn't need them? What if we wielded their power instead and helped ourselves in all the ways they refused to? I could make that happen. Wasn't pa Paul a mortal person once? Reality. With you do I, do I recall that right? So basic, basically there are people who have ascended to godhood in D&D, in uh, Forgotten Realms, but yeah, they are usually bad, bad guys. You don't need star scale. I have you. Then have me. But have the best possible version of me. The tadpoles, the orb, these threats to our existence. The gods could aid us if they wished, but instead they cower behind Io. So let us act ourselves. With the power of the crown, any foe would be rendered impotent. Any obstacle would be dwarfed by our might. I used to believe Mistress Th Forgiveness that, that, that was That sounds so for. bad idea. But I was wrong. You showed me just how much I have to live for. With you, I forget, my goddess. I love you. Good. Tell me you feel the same way. Tell me you want what I want. Please. Uh, I love you. But for the man that you are, not the god you pretend to be. But think what I offer. The vastness of eternity to explore the weave at our fingertips. You would really prefer me as I am? <laughs> Stop his protest with, with Evita Keys. Yeah, that, that, that works. Yes, that's a pretty good place to have a date. Oh, 
Okay, how to remove the skirt? Knowing I'll never hear Cazador's voice again. Knowing it'll never command me to bow against my will. And free from it. Congratulations. Forever. You're not wrong. Cazador left his mark on me in more ways than one. For a moment, I wanted to be just like him. I came so close to losing everything back there. To losing myself. Back at the ritual, all I could see was the power on offer and the safety it promised. I was so blinded by it. <laughs> Just as Cazador was. But you saw something in me. Someone else I could be. Someone who could break the cycle of power and terror that started <laughs> centuries ago. You saved me back there. I may not have appreciated it at the time, but I do now. Thank you. <laughs> so am I. As fun as all that power would have been, this feels more... me. When I look at my future, Anything and everything feels possible now. You saved me from myself. And let me walk a new path where I can be free. Truly, honestly, free. This is a gift, you know. Thank you. I won't forget it. My love. I hope you enjoyed our voyage through the cosmos. I was hoping you might have a moment to talk about it. Neither have I. The closest thing to a deserving canvas on which to place your beauty. But I've also not forgotten why I took you there. I hope you don't think less of me. Great ambition should not come at the expense of what you already hold dear. I see that now. What divine calculus plucked each of us from the ether and thrust us together. I don't deserve you, truly. But I will do my utmost to earn the right. Was there anything else you wish to discuss? <laughs> Strangely, no. Once a mere glimpse of her face would have been enough to turn my insides over. But not this time. In her likeness, I used to read a thousand stories. She was beauty, wisdom, elegance, power. She contained universes. But now, it's hard to see any redeeming qualities in a lover who condemned you to death. Uh, yeah, that's uh, I gotta see that. I'd rather gaze into your eyes than hers. Yours are capable of tenderness and feeling. No god could ever compare. I regret many things in my life. Choosing to be here, intact and unexploded, is not one of them. For now, to have a few more days in your company, no. I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> that is house house that's made of made of sheep. Okay. Address it is here. How much did you drink, you idiot do call? Just the blushing Oak door. Oh, 
Okay. Hot, hot, hot. Did you see that? Incredible. Ah, uh, th this person. And ah, the heart-stopping bloodsucker. Eh. Ever since our last liaison, I haven't been able to get you out of my mind. <laughs> Nor have I. No matter how hard I try. <laughs> Forgive the mess. Your blood is far more volatile than I'd anticipated. It's a breakthrough in the sanguine arts. The likes of which the world has Save. never seen. The Grand Matriarch will have no choice. Rabbiting on about myself when I have you, the prize bleeder, on my very doorstep. If you'd come inside, we could discuss something far more exciting than drow politics. I think uh, not. A pity. But you may change your mind. And if you do, don't hesitate to seek me out. I'll always be happy to see you. Kale is inspired. Okay. Or can we? Oh, there's more of this. I think I'm going to the wrong direction though. Shouldn't go wandering in dark alleys. Very dangerous hobby. Gets people killed. Why? You're Farling's friend. She said to let you in. Funny little gnome she is. Always laughing at me. Even when I don't joke. Come, I'll let you in. My pleasure. Friends in low places. In you go. Before I change my mind. Try and imagine doing your job properly. Well, well, well. The fabled haunt of Nine Fingers Key. Never visited before. I thought you got around. I always steered clear. If guild members started disappearing, people would start asking questions. And chasm. Okay, so this is basically when the answer is invariably the silver head. Nine fingers of thieves killed. And it's in the city sewers, which we didn't look into in proper detail. Good good to know. Um, we are still ways ways of Do not be ways off by smiles and song evil. Yep. Comes in many forms. Okay. Bolo. <laughs> He's problem. He's problem. You have done quite enough explaining, Bolofan Gadam. You have poisoned the very hearts and minds of these good, kind, gentle citizens with your lies. Your delusions. Your conspiracies. Though you hide behind a mask of stories, we have seen beyond the veil. We see what you really are. Fear monger. Fear monger. Okay, we need to rescue Polo again. So he's a yes man. Your parasite stirs in recognition. This man is infected. Ah, surprise. Let the hells follow! Today, citizens, we rid ourselves of this cankerous sore. Today, we burn away all falsehoods. Today, we will be divided no longer, for today, we rise in truth. Don't you stand there? Help <laughs> me, God damn it! Help me! I suppose we should aid him. Though I'd hate to miss the show. The new 
newcomer speaks, and speaks of evidence, and trials, and justice. And in so doing, they delay their very own salvation. Dear citizen, dear friend, rest assured you will have your justice. But I'm afraid the time for trials has passed. Now is the time for judgment! No! Please! No! And it's a, it's a battle. Okay, let's hide. We need water. Who's most most dangerous? Rain. Oh yeah, and I should remove the curse as well. Insect plague. That, that wasn't the brightest idea. Ouch. Can't sneak attack. <laughs> okay, the calamities. Oh no. Survival is all that matters. <laughs> Should get started. Um These NPCs do <laughs> The, my, my characters do not really avoid the danger. Okay, now we can talk to him. I really thought I was done for. Again. I suppose thanks are in order. Again. <laughs> Again. What's an heroic story without a little risking of one's neck, eh? <laughs> they look like a like a butcher. The more people want to kill you for it. 
I'll tell you all about it. But not here. Too many eyes, ears, and weapons about. Meet me at your camp. Okay. Steel Watch Foundry. Entry prohibited by order of Lord Gortash. I need a quick word. Oh, Wave Mother, Queen of the Depths, hear me. Please carry Holly to her final rest in the deep wilds. Please. Sorry, are you here for Wave Servant Holly's funeral? Oh, it's already started. Out the dressed inside. No, no. All are welcome to come and celebrate the life of the fallen Wave Servant. May the Wave Mother smile on you as she did Holly. Isn't she? What she what are Queen's house? For Umberly has blessed her humble daughter with Umberly. a pure death. Her lips blue with her kiss, her lungs full of her quenching word. Umberly's mercy saved her from a slow, sinking death in the beast's shadow. How dare this beast sully the safety of Grey Harbor? We will find its master and send him struggling into the bitch queen's embrace. Not a sweet sleep like Holly's, but a suffocating flood of fruitless guards and bursting flesh. You, supplicant, what tribute do you bring to honor the Wave Mother's fallen daughter? Uh. Yes. Then you know as well as Umberly that blood must soon be shed. Your tribute is well received. Breathe deep as she permits. Holly, one of Umberly's beloved wave servants. Blessed Umberly saw fit to spare her an ignoble death. But her passing was not as the wave mother intended. It was a beast who took her life. An unnatural one whose very existence is an affront to Umberly. A wretched metal monstrosity hewn by hubris. A rusting pollutant that bleeds black blood into Umberly's pristine waters. The Queen of the Depths is generous to those who serve her, and her favor is far less deadly than her wrath. Find the master of this poison. Far less deadly. And mm, slay okay. him. Then one of her most precious gifts shall be yours. <laughs> precious gift isn't drowning. <laughs> that privilege is not yours to earn. <laughs> okay. The bee struck Holly while she was swimming in Grey Harbor. She was found by some fishermen. We haven't found its lair as yet. Perhaps you can find where the beast takes its slumber and skewer it before it wakes. Salt kiss your brow. We await your return and the beast master's demise. Glorious wave mother. Okay. Avenged it. It's coming away. Turn based mode. Uh, we we re really need him. Step 
Gondian artificers might lack a certain worldly wisdom, there's no doubting they're masters of their craft. God, where's Ben? You're a child at heart, Gale. Admiring wind-up toys and clockwork trinkets. I admire any who follow their curiosity to novel and unexpected means. This is how the world changes for the better. But we are going to go to the front door. Certainly. Let's have some fun. Easy. Okay, he needs to. Hey, what is that doing? We are not in the turn paste. Oh no. Now we are in the turn paste. Now oh, simply. I can't waste any more time. Uh, this is actually cutting close. Can't afford to stay idle. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Very well. What now? Should mind my step. What's next, I wonder? I see a way. IQ thousand. Okay, so we are we are here. I heard you were disciplined by overseer Holtz, Red Brother. When instructing a what path lies before me? Vents. Okay, so if you are small you can get through here. Get this another. What is that color? Do you have a son? Do you not? Is he as lazy and pathetic as his spineless mother? Wait! Stay your hand, I beg you! Prinsky's motivation sequence activated. Tell me, Gondian. Tell me about your son. His no motivation. Yes, Overseer Holt. He's frail in body and mind like me, like all of us. Yet by your grace, he lives. And your wife? She is... was... useless. And interfered with production quotas. You were wise to remove her from this world. Okay, this is this kind of uh, fact. fact that... I will work through the night. This watcher will be operational by dawn. Save labor. I will allow it. But if your work is anything short of impeccable, your son will die screaming. Is that clear? Yes. Overseer Holtz. Why is it working? <laughs> 
Red brother, stand ready. Gondians, so much as okay. you wish, and I'll rip your tongues out myself. You recognize the overseer's uniform. Bane. She's a follower of Bane, the god of tyranny. Good god of ty tyranny. <laughs> nice. I'm here to help Gondians together. I'm going to free you all. for nothing. The Gondians wouldn't know a spine if I ripped it from their backs and beat them with it. You're wrong. Even if we beg, even if we humiliate ourselves, it won't matter. You'll kill us all anyway. What was that? I said, we shall bow no more. For the glory of Gond! Okay. Too many Prinsky's motivation sequence activated. Oh no. no the motivator deactivate it. Hurry. So motivation means I suppose it would have killed them. That was close. He's wow. down. So much for peace. <laughs> Miss Advan <laughs> Attack on Advan and she misses. Okay. Some deep massage, massage with, with, the, with the lightning bolt. Or uh, shocking craft, rather. Ouch. Okay, he's done. If I hide the corpses, the smell will attract them. I need to dispose of them. <laughs> Cut them up. Oh. Perhaps incinerate them. Please, so what if I get caught? So much blood. No. Oh, the smell. Security of his key. Infernal maze. One problem at a time. We deal with the bodies. Right now. Kill switch protocol. Okay, so how does kill switch work? Caution. Prince Kiss motivator is the supreme banite means to ultimate coercion. But it's useful solely as a detonant that not as a weapon. When triggered, the users only moments to act deactivate it before prison time charges det detonate and hostages are killed. Never go to full detonation. So long as you hold the motivator, you are safe from the Gondians. Behind the corpses, the smell will attract someone. Need to dispose of them. I'm gonna be sick. 
rid of these bodies. Cut them right off. Now. Oh, but perhaps incinerate them. An overseer. I just deserved it. What if I get caught? No. We're not thinking like that. Breathe. Lest it be. What have we done? They're dead. They're all dead. No. You don't understand. The overseers hold more than our lives hostage. They have our families. And if they see what we've done, killing me will only be the beginning. Go and help us. gate betrays your presence, stranger. You don't belong here. Who are you? Blackaith. Why? Asterion Shadowheart, approve. Your presence imperils us all. If any of us attempts to escape, our kin will die. The overseers, they have a contraption. When triggered, it will kill everyone who wears a collar. to meet the enemy. The overseers, they are Glexbran Rakfar. The collars are not only equipped with explosives, there is also a mechanism that alerts the overseers if they're removed. One of us may be able to save themselves, but it would be at the expense of everyone else. We can't risk it. Even if we did somehow unshackle our collars simultaneously and overthrow our oppressors, there would be consequences. Our families are held elsewhere. The overseers need only activate those contraptions they hold. Okay, where? Where are they keeping the families? Of our actions too. We cannot win. We must aid in building these vagon. Gun-gun. Aye. Even more, I'd help you destroy this place. Where, where are fami families being held? I don't know where they are. But some of the overseers must. You have to infiltrate deeper into the foundry. Just make sure you don't get caught. If they raise the alarm, they'll trigger the collars. I will pray for you. My daughter... Her name is Obinia. Gond Ralfraga's Hulnish. May Gond be with you. Patience. It hasn't been long. Okay, so more sneaking. So do we dare, but. Uh... Seems simple enough. 